Hey everybody, today we are going to talk about testing for disease and three separate ways to solve a problem. So we covered this problem in the textbook on homework number two. You can read the question text from problem 13.59. You can pause this slide if you like. But the question that we're really trying to answer is this last sentence in bold. What's the probability that a patient testing negative is truly free of HIV? So after we read the question, we want to extract the information and put it in a useful format. So what do we know? The first thing it tells us is that 99.7% of tests conducted were correctly positive. What's that mean that they were correctly positive? Well, it implies that we know the people were infected, and of those infected people, 99.7% got a positive test. Let's translate this into math, and we get this conditional probability, the probability of a positive test, given that you're infected, is 0.997. The next thing that we're told in the problem is that for people without HIV, 98.5% of the tests were correctly negative. So likewise, this implies that we know the people were clean, and of them, 98.5% tested negative. So written in math, there we go. Number three, 15% of patients may actually carry HIV. So that tells us that the probability that they're infected is 0.15. So let's organize this information and fill out the things that we know. So let's take that last bit of information that the probability of being infected is 0.15 and we can put that in the table right here so it corresponds to the infected row and we know that the probability of being infected plus the probability of being clean equals 1 so that means that 85% of people must be clean. Now. We're also told that the probability of a positive test given that you're infected is 0.997. So let's use that to find the information that we want to stick in this table. So what we're looking for right here is uh, this box right here, which will give us the intersection of infected and a positive test. So how do we do that? Well, the intersection over here is going to equal the conditional probability times the marginal probability. So we have numbers for those. We just plug those in. We get 0.14955. So let's stick that in the table. All right, next up. We know that the probability of being infected and testing positive plus infected and testing negative has to equal the total infected. All right, so those two things are going to add up to equal 0.15. Next, we want to fill in some more information. We have to use something from the question that we haven't used yet. And so far, we have not done any math with this probability of getting a negative test given that you're clean. So let's do basically the same thing we did last time. We can find this box right here. Okay, so we can get that intersection by multiplying the conditional probability times the marginal probability. So we have numbers for that. We'll plug them in and we get 0.83725, we stick it in the table. Now, the same thing, we know that this plus this equals 0.85. So now what we've done is we've just uh, done the same thing that we did for the infected people, is that we had found this intersection right here, and then we know that that has to add with this number to get 0.85. Okay, so then we can add up these numbers right here, and find out what the probability is of a positive test. Now notice that you can check your work because this number plus this number should also equal one. Okay, now we have all the information we need to finally get to the answer to the question that was posed. So what's the probability that a patient testing negative is truly free of HIV? Well, let's write that more specifically in math. What is the probability that you're clean given a negative test? So here we go. It's easy. We have a formula for that. We just take this intersection divided by this marginal probability, and we have numbers for that. We get 0.9995. So there we go. That is the answer to our question, exactly what we were looking for. There's another way that we could go about this problem, and that's with a tree diagram. And I think that this approach might be a bit more intuitive for some people. 
So we're going to first assume that nature decides if you're infected with a probability 0.15 and we're going to draw the tree like this. So with 0.15 probability you get HIV, 0.85 probability you'll go along this branch of the tree and have no HIV. Okay. Now we're given some more information in the question that if you have HIV you get a positive test result 0.997 of the time. Okay, so we have HIV, all right, so we're on this branch of the tree, and for a positive test, that's going to happen with probability 0.997. Well, we know that uh, the other part of that, if you have HIV and you don't get a positive test, then you have to have HIV and get a negative test, so that's going to have to happen 0 0.003 of the time. And likewise, if we move along down this other branch and we have no HIV we're told that we get a negative result 0.985 of the time so that's this number right here and for testing negative so whatever's left over this 0 0.015 has to be for the positive test and now when we want to find these final probabilities here we can just multiply the first step of the tree this first branch times the second branch so see for this testing positive with HIV, 0.15 times 0.997, that's from this and this. Testing negative with HIV, we first have 0.15 and then we have 0 0.003, so multiply all those together. And just to check your work when you're done, you can make sure that this number plus this one, this one, and this one all add up to one. Okay, so at this point it's really easy to answer the question what's the probability that we're clean given a negative test result so who has negative test results we have these people right here with negative test results we have these people right here with negative test results of them only these are clean so what's that tell us the probability that we're clean intersect a negative test okay so that would be this 0.83725 right here is the number of people who are clean and have a negative test result but when we're given the negative test result we have to divide by the probability of getting a negative test result and that can happen from either people who are clean or the false negatives from people who are infected so when we do this math we get 0.9995 and you'll notice that this is the same answer that we had for our previous method great Next, let's move on to Bayes' rule. We can use Bayes' rule to figure this problem out as well. Really, we're covering Bayes' rule now, and it's nothing new. It can often be intimidating for students, but you've already seen it. In fact, you basically did it in this HIV problem. Okay, so what we're going to do here is use Bayes' rule to reverse the probability given to us in the question. So the question tells us the probability of being they're getting a negative test given that you're clean is 0.985 and then they want you to flip that around and find the probability of being clean given a negative test okay so we have to add a little bit more information right from the problem they also told us and this is on that second slide again that we're also given the P infected equals 0.15 so that means the probability of being clean is 0.85 and they also told us that the probability of a positive test given that you're infected is 0.997. So that means the probability of a negative test given that you're infected is 0.003. So Bayes' rule applied to this problem to reverse these probabilities it goes like this. We want to find the probability that we're clean given a negative test. That's our goal. And so we were given this number over here. And we gathered this number from the information that we had in the table. Uh, I'm sorry, that was given to us in the question. And we can see that all we have left to do, we just really need to find this probability of a negative test. So we don't have that information yet. Well, what are we going to do? We can just take the probability of negative and clean plus negative and infected. Okay. Well, here we have this intersection of negative and clean. So we can take that and multiply the conditional probability by the marginal probability and get that intersection. All right, now 
same thing, probability of negative intersect infected is going to equal this conditional times the marginal. So we have numbers for that. And all we have to do is add up those two numbers and that's the probability of a negative test. So all we do is put those numbers into Bayes rule and here we go, we have 0.9995 as our answer. That's the same answer we got with the other two methods. Okay, so there are a number of ways that you can approach problems. And as long as you get to the right conclusion, it normally doesn't matter how you do it. So you'll notice that some of these methods are faster than others. And on a test, you may wish to go with the fastest method. Thanks for watching.